good morning dear students in the last lecture we were talking about energy resources and i had discussed about the types of energy resources as renewable energy resources as well as non renewable energy resources we had discussed the various forms of renewable energy resources as solar energy wind energy biomass energy hydropower energy etc and we saw that uh, all these types of energy resources are called renewable energy resources because they can be regenerated in a very short span of time although currently we are consuming more volumes of non renewable energy resources such as coal petrol diesel etc but we also know that these non renewable energy resources are associated with certain environmental problems such as emission of harmful gases which are causing problems like global warming and ozone layer depletion and along with this their stock is limited so regress and continuous use of these non renewable energy resources will end up all these resources in the near future so there is a need to shift from non renewable energy resources to the use of renewable energy resources in the future in today's lecture we'll discuss about some of the renewable energy resources their uses as well as advantages and benefits so let's start our today's lecture the first question comes to our mind that why renewable energy is required at present as i discussed before also that use of non renewable energy resources are directly related to emission of harmful gases such as carbon dioxide methane sulfur dioxide etc we know that carbon dioxide is uh, greatly responsible for increasing the temperature of this planet and because of that global warming is happening on this earth if you look at this slide you will see a graph which uh, tells us about the concentration of carbon dioxide across the globe from 1950 to 2020 the elevated line shows that the concentration of this carbon dioxide is increasing every year and the current concentration of this carbon dioxide is approximately 411 ppm and this has increased by near about 95 ppm since 1950 so higher concentration of this carbon dioxide is because of use of fossil fuels such as coal petrol diesel which are non renewable resources of energy because of global warming the earth's temperature has increased by 1.1 degree celsius in past 200 years and this has also caused acidification of the oceans the sea levels are rising and it has risen up to 3.2 mm each year the sea level uh, rises to a level of 3.2 mm the ice sheets are decreasing because of high temperature of uh, earth and this is leading to the retreating of glaciers there is a decrease in arctic ice at a rate of 13% each decade every 10 years the arctic ice is decreasing by 13% of its uh, previous uh, volume so all these problems are directly uh associated with the use of non renewable energy resources so that's why now the renewable energy is very important for controlling the climate change and other environmental issues so 
that is why we need this renewable energy resources at present and also in the future. Now, talking about the types of uh, renewable energy resources, I have taken solar energy firstly. The solar energy has heat which uh, is utilized in various forms. So, nowadays solar panels are installed to generate heat energy. The solar cell is also known as photovoltaic cell and it is made from the semiconducting material such as silicon which turns sunlight directly into electricity. So, whenever a solar cell or a PV cell is made, it is made uh, by the semiconductor material such as silicon and in this two type of layers are uh, made. You can see through this uh, diagram also. There is one n type layer which has excess of electrons and it is also known as negative type uh, silicon layer and below this we have p type silicon layer which is uh, positive type silicon layer which has uh, deficiency of electrons. So, this n type and p type silicon layers are made by uh, adding some impurities uh, to the pure silicon and these two layers are placed one above the other and they are separated by an insulating uh, material. The n type layer has excess of electrons. So, whenever the sunlight will fall on the n type silicon layer which is uh, placed on the top and is exposed to the sun rays, the electrons get excited out of this n type silicon layer and they jump into the circuit and move uh, through the circuit and then finally, these el electrons uh, reach to the p type layer where there is deficiency of electron. So, this p type silicon layer is also known as positive holes where electron will rest and whenever the flow of electron will take place it will result into generation of electricity. So, by this mechanism a photovoltaic cell works. In India in recent past we have increased our solar power capacity many folds and in last 5 years it has been increased approximately 11 times. The solar power capacity of India has increased from 2.6 gigawatt that was 5 years before to 34.6 gigawatt in this year. Also recently India has achieved fifth global position in solar power by replacing Italy till 2019 we were at sixth position, but this year we have crossed Italy in terms of our uh, solar power uh, installed capacity. The national solar mission of India targets uh, installing around 100 gigawatt grid connected solar power plants in the country by the end of 2022. So, the speed with which our solar power energy is enhanced is quite appreciating and our government is taking every suitable step to increase the capacity of solar power generation in India. Now, we will see the uses of solar energy. The solar energy has uh, multiple uses such as it can be used for generation of electricity using solar panels. The, the solar panels can also be used for uh, using the solar pumps that are used for irrigation for pumping out water from the ground uh, underground water aquifers. Then these uh, solar energies are also used uh, in solar water heaters for heating up uh, water and which can be used in uh, the household activities such as bathing, washing of utensils as well as clothes. And also uh, the solar furnaces has been uh, installed for melting the metals in which 
the solar rays are reflected to one particular point where the furnace is placed and it uh, rises the temperature of internal temperature of furnace where the metal which is to be melted is kept. So, besides this there are multiple uses of solar energy such as solar cookers for uh, preparing food, then solar fans, solar watches, solar calculators etcetera, solar uh, road indicators. So, we can use this solar energy in uh, various ways and save our fossil fuels. Now, we will talk about the pros and cons of solar energy. First of all, talking about the advantages of solar energy, we know that it is a renewable energy resource, so easily available. It reduces electricity bills, it has diverse applications as I said that it can be used in uh, various ways. It has a low maintenance cost and this solar energy is related with the technology development. Now, every technology has certain disadvantages also, same is with the solar energy. The sum of the disadvantages of solar energy are as follows, such as the installation cost of uh, solar energy is high. This technology is weather dependent, if uh, the weather is cloudy, there is not enough uh, sunlight, then the electricity generation by a solar panel will be uh, very less. The solar energy storage is quite expensive, it uses a lot of space for installation of solar panels and recently it has been uh, investigated that the solar panels are associated with excessive heat trapping which may result into global warming. So, these are certain pros and cons of solar energy. Now, we will talk of uh, about another energy resource which is uh, wind energy and in this uh, category the velocity of wind is utilized for running the turbine and this turbine which is uh, connected to a generator then can generate electricity and the wind energy technology is very suitable to uh, the seashore areas where uh, we may have uh, good quantity of wind blowing throughout the year. If you look at uh, an structure of a windmill, it has uh, propeller blades which are moved uh, by the blowing uh, wind. And a generator is attached to uh, the windmill which uh, converts the kinetic energy of uh, propeller blades into the electrical energy. Then it has a tower on which uh, the propeller blades are uh, fixed. Then we have a base on which the entire structure is made. So, one particular such structure is called a windmill. Whenever number of windmills are installed at one place, it is uh, called as wi a wind farm. So, multiple windmills will constitute a wind farm. So, for harnessing wind energy, any area should have a strong winds and it should have minimum velocity of wind that is 3 meter per second. If the velocity of wind is below 3 meter per second, then there will be no energy or electricity generation at that period. Then the area should have a clear hilltop. The turbines should be placed in existing wind direction, so as to uh, catch the maximum kinetic energy of wind uh, for generation of electricity. So, this was a brief uh, outline about a windmill and wind, wind farms. Now, we will see uh, that how the power output of a windmill is calculated. The amount of power that therefore, electricity a wind turbine can produce is largely based on the wind velocity. The formula which is used for calculation of power output to of a windmill is as follows. The power output in watts is equal to 
power coefficient multiplied by 1 by 2 multiplied by rho multiplied by area swapped area of the blade as well as multiplied by uh, cube of the velocity of the wind. So, we have seen through this formula that the power generation is largely dependent on the velocity of wind because it is uh, multiplied three times during the calculation of power output. So, this means that higher is the wind speed then lots of more power can be generated. And the power generation is also associated with the swept area of the blade. Swept area means the entire circular area which the blades of a windmill uh, will utilize in during their movement. So, this means that if there will be larger larger wind turbine turbines if the length of the blades will be large then more power can be generated because larger length of the blades will provide large area that in turn will generate more and more electricity. So, the value power coefficient C p uh, is 0 0.59 at uh, ideal conditions. The density air density is approximately 1 kg per meter square. The swept area depends on the length of blades and the velocity of wind may change from time to time. So, using this equation we can calculate the power output of any windmill. Now, let us do some uh, exercise uh, for the calculation of power generation. So, how the power generation can be calculated in this situation? If we have a windmill and if uh, the diameter of the swept area is 2 meters, so in this case radius will be 1 meter and if the speed of wind is 3 meter per second, then what would be the power generated by this windmill? So, I am leaving this uh, exercise to all of you after this lecture ends up. Please try to calculate the power equivalent uh, using this formula that is C p into 1 by 2 into rho into a into v cube and we will discuss about uh, its answer in the next lecture. So, that was uh, all about uh, the power generation uh, through a windmill. Now, the windmill also has some advantages as well as uh, disadvantages, we will discuss few of them. The advantages includes that it is a free fuel, we do not have to pay anything for uh, wind. So, it is a cleanest form of energy because it uh, rarely causes any kind of pollution. Uh, there is no emission of harmful gases during uh, the operation of a windmill. It is advanced technology and in the future also the wind technology uh, will be seen with the latest advancements. It does not disrupt the farmland activities if uh, any windmill is installed or wind farm is installed in a farmland area, then uh, the farming practices can be done without any interruption. So, it does not uh, disrupt the farmland activities. It uh, also reduces our dependence uh, on the fossil fuels. Now, the disadvantages of the wind energy are uh, as follows. First, it is unsafe to some of the wildlife, especially to the birds, because if any flying bird strikes to the uh, rotating blades of the windmill, then uh, there could be death of uh, the birds. It causes noise pollution and the installation cost of a windmill is quite high. If you want to install a windmill uh, of capacity 1 megawatt, then it will cost you somewhere around 5 to 7 crores. 
the power generation is not continuous because it depends on the velocity of wind. If uh, wind velocity drops, then power generation will also drop down. So, this means that it will give you intermittent power generation, not a continuous power generation. The windmills are not suitable for every location. So, these windmills are suitable only to certain locations where uh, we can see uh, good amount of wind blowing uh, for a larger period. So, it is suitable for certain uh, specific locations such as uh, hilltops as well as uh, seashores etcetera. So, these were pros and cons of the windmills. Now, uh, talking about the wind power capacity of India, India currently uh, has a fourth highest wind installed capacity in the world uh, with the total installed capacity of 35.6 gigawatt as on 31st March 2019. The recent assessment shows that a gross wind power potential of 302 gigawatt in the country at 100 meter above the ground uh, level. So, we have a wind power generation capacity of 302 gigawatt out of that we are generating 35.6 gigawatts. So, this technology has a wide uh, opportunity in India in, in, in countries like in country like India because India has a good potential of uh, power generation using wind energy. The most of this potential of uh, wind power capacity exist in seven windy states and these states are Gujarat, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. The highest wind potential is in Gujarat state that is uh, approximately 84,431 megawatts. Then we have Karnataka with 55,000. Maharashtra with 45,000, Andhra Pradesh with 44,000 megawatt, Tamil Nadu with 33.7 uh, megawatt, 33.7 uh, thousand uh, megawatt, then Rajasthan with uh, near about 18,000 megawatt and Madhya Pradesh with uh, 10,000 megawatt. So, these are uh, seven states with uh, a good wind potential. So, that was about the wind potential as well as the wind capacity of India. Now, we will talk about geothermal energy which is also considered as a renewable energy resource. So, first of all we will try to understand that what is geothermal energy. Geo means earth and thermal means heat means energy that is uh, generated by using the heat of earth. The geothermal energy is heat energy from the interior of earth and this heat comes uh, through the decay of radioactive elements and residual heat from the planetary formations uh, billions of years ago. The water is pumped down into the hot rocks where it is heated up. So, we have geothermal zones or the rocks where temperature is very high and these geothermal zones are situated at certain depth from the ground surface. So, the wat water is pumped to such areas where it captures the heat of that geothermal zone and the temperature of water rises up. Then this water is taken out using pumps and the steam is separated from the water and that steam is used to run the turbines which can generate electricity. So, this is the mechanism on which a geothermal power plant works. The steam then can be used for generation of electricity by rotating a turbine. So, this diagram shows a geothermal power plant. Now, we will uh, see more closely that how a geothermal power plant works. You can see through this diagram that we have a geothermal zone that is uh, situated at certain depth from the ground surface. So, the rocks of this area has very high temperature and the temperature may rise up uh, 
from 100 degree Celsius to 150 degree Celsius also. So, there is an injection well through which cold water will be pumped down and when this water reaches to uh, the geothermal zone where there is high temperature, the water is heated up, this hot water is then taken out, converted into steam, sent to the turbines and turbines has generators attached with it and these generators can generate electricity. This electricity can be sent to a electricity grid or it can also be sent to homes and buildings. Then after that this steam is uh, condensed in a cooling tower and it is converted into water, then this water is again injected uh, through the injection well to the geothermal zone. So, this is a closed loop process which uh, which keeps on uh, occurring uh, continuously and in this way uh, electricity is generated using the heat of earth. Now, talking about the geothermal energy potential of India, in India exploration and study of geothermal fields started in 1970. The geological survey of India has identified near about 350 geothermal energy locations in the country. The most promising of all these locations is uh, Puga Valley of Ladakh, which has a very good geothermal zone having high temperature beneath the ground surface. The total estimated potential for the geothermal energy in India has been investigated approximately 10,000 megawatts. There are seven geothermal provinces in India or zones in India. These are the Himalayas, Sohana, West Coast, Kambay, Son Narmada Tapi, also called Sonata, Godavari, as well as Mahanadi. The ongoing projects, uh, geothermal projects in India are magneto telluric investigations in Tattapani geothermal area in Chhattisgarh. Uh, the second project is magneto telluric uh, investigations in Puga geothermal uh, area in Ladakh region in Jammu and Kashmir. So, that was all about the geothermal zones. I have taken a picture from uh, internet and this is uh, an image of Tattapani geothermal zone that is located in Chhattisgarh. So, that was all about the geothermal energy. So, that was all about today's lecture, we will talk about some more geothermal energy resources in the future. So, that was all about today, in next lecture we will talk about some more geothermal, some more uh, renewable energy resources, thank you.